In studying the most successful college football programs during the decade of the 90s, one keeps bumping into the name Kansas State. While many football programs can proclaim greatness based on one breakthrough season, the true mark of great football programs is consistent success year in and year out. Only a handful of programs can make that claim. And following yet another record-breaking season in 1996, Kansas State can now stake its rightful place among the nation's elite. Only six teams in the nation have won at least nine games in each of the past four seasons. The list includes some old and some new. But make no mistake, this is who's who in college football today. Kansas State, Nebraska, Florida, Florida State, Ohio State, and Penn State. Under the direction of one of college football's most decorated head coaches, Bill Snyder, the Wildcats finished the 96 season ranked 17th in both polls and now have been ranked in the top 25 for 58 of the last 62 polls dating back to 1993. The 1996 regular season was another bestseller in picturesque Manhattan, Kansas. Carved into the scenic Flint Hills of northeastern Kansas, sold out KSU Stadium was filled well above capacity in 1996 and registered record attendance figures for the third consecutive season. Coming off a 10-2 record in 1995 and a number six national ranking, K-State headed into the new Big 12 Conference with high expectations and the Wildcats didn't disappoint. August 31st, 1996 will go down in the history books as the day the Big 12 Conference opened its doors as the nation's premier football conference. And the historians will note that on that day, the winner of the first ever Big 12 Conference football game was Kansas State. With ABC cameras looking on, Kansas State kicked off the 1996 inaugural Big 12 football game by hosting Texas Tech. Trailing 3-0, the Cats' first touchdown of the season was the result of a 12-play, 79-yard drive early in the second quarter. All-American wide receiver Kevin Lockett made three key receptions, including a brilliant 29-yard grab on this third down play. On third and two, play action fake for Kavanaugh. Back to throw, looks, throws a pass out for Kevin Lockett. The pass is caught by Lockett inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. Kevin Lockett went up and pulled it in over Corey Turner, and K-State's back in business at the Tech 12. Four plays later, Brian Kavanaugh capped the touchdown drive with this one-yard keeper for a 7-3 K-State lead. Hard count. Brian does keep it himself. Going and falling across the goal line. No signal yet. Sure looks like he's in and he is. K-State's got a touchdown. The Cats then added two more touchdowns to take a comfortable 21-3 lead early in the fourth quarter. Throws a little inside screen to Dean to the 15. Jimmy to the 10. Hurdles a defender. Five. Touchdown K-State. Jimmy Dean hurdles over a man at the five and goes in for the score. And K-State now leads 13-3. Canny back to retrieve for K-State. 13 minutes left of this game. High snap over Hernandez's head. It's loose in the end zone. Jerry Hernandez can't get it. K-State lands on the football. Mario Smith is there. It's a touchdown for Kansas State. A late rally brought Texas Tech within striking distance. But the Wildcats preserved the 21-14 victory as Mario Smith and Lamar Chapman combined to break up this fourth down pass in the final minute. Lutridge back to throw on fourth down. Looks, throws to the end zone. The pass is caught and fumbled at the play. They're going to say it's incomplete. They're going to say it's incomplete. The receiver had it, got nailed, and lost the football. And K-State's going to win them a game here today against the Texas Tech Red Raiders in the inaugural Big 12 game. They take over on downs at the 21-yard line. Defensive end Niall Wyron earned the Big 12's first defensive player of the week honor after recording four tackles for loss, including three sacks. The Wildcats flex their muscles in week two with a 59-3 blistering of Indiana State. Sophomore Marlon Charles rushed for a career high, 195 yards and three touchdowns, while quarterback Brian Cavanaugh 
through for three more scores. And now the clock in 15 seconds. Kavanaugh trying to hurry them up and get them in the line of scrimmage. Third and four from the 25. Brian back to throw with 10 seconds now and a half. Look, sets, throws toward the end zone, finds Jarrett Grostenier's got it, touchdown K-State! Jarrett Grostenier from St. Paul, Kansas. Kavanaugh and Grostenier hooked up again in the third quarter on a four-yard scoring play. But it was a couple of young Wildcats who turned in the play of the day. Play action fake for Beasley. Here comes a heavy rush. Beasley eludes the rush. Looking downfield. Has a man wide open, way down the field. He spots him, gets a pass out. Pass caught by Troy Hackney. 15, 10, 5. Hackney dies. Touchdown, Kansas State. Jonathan Beasley, a 57-yard touchdown pass to Troy Hackney. The K-State defense limited the Sycamores to 180 yards and only nine first downs as the Cats improved their record to 2-0. After narrowly missing a shutout against Indiana State, the Wildcat defense would not be denied in week three. And they came out smoking with a 35-0 blanking of the Cincinnati Bearcats. This time, the visitors could muster only 162 yards of offense. On second and eight from the 29, Plummer back in the pocket to throw. Has time, here comes the rush, eludes one man, but can't get away from Niall Wyron. Wyron catches him from behind, back at the 35. Once again, the Wildcat offense turned to its ground game. The Cats scored five rushing touchdowns, including two each from tailbacks Mike Lawrence and Marlon Charles. Those two combined for 180 yards, and the Wildcats rolled up 257 yards on the ground. K-State's first road trip of the season took the Wildcats to Houston for a matchup with the much-improved Rice Owls. Brian Cavanaugh turned in another spectacular performance as he tied his own school record with four touchdown passes. Wide receiver Jimmy Dean was on the receiving end of three of those touchdown tosses, including this 23-yard catch on the first drive. Cats at the Owl 23. Brian takes the snap, back to throw, looks, has time, sets, looks over the middle, pass is, caught near the goal line, touchdown, Kansas State! It's Jimmy Dean, across the middle, made the catch of the three and goes in, and K-State, what a drive! They go 80 yards, and they're on the board after a 23-yard pass from Ryan Cavanaugh to Jimmy Dean. Another quick score gave K-State control, but Rice trimmed the lead to seven points midway through the third quarter. But K-State's kickoff return unit silenced any thoughts of a Rice upset as Chris Canny set sail 70 yards on the ensuing kickoff to set up Kavanaugh's second touchdown pass. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, Canny to the 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, and run out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Rice's defenders trying to get their crowd into this game. A shotgun formation for K-State, 5, 4, 3 and a play clock. Snap back to Kavanaugh. Brian looks, sets, looks, gets hit, bounces off his man, looking for the downfield, now throws toward the end zone, has a man pass caught, it's a touchdown for Kansas State, Jimmy Dean, two yards deep in the end zone, was on his knees and makes a catch, Brian Cavanaugh with enough presence of mind to pull, to look downfield and find Jimmy Dean for the score, and K-State goes up 20-7. to seven. In addition to his kick return, Canny kept the Owls up all night in this one, as he also had an interception return for 44 yards, three punt returns for 37 yards, and one reception for 26 yards. Final score, K-State 34, Rice 7th.